came up for your break for lunch. Uh, we recovered the history of F51. Now, uh, the history of uh, Matroska will be covered by the founder of Matroska himself. So it started for me in 2001, uh, there was a uh, French election in 2002 and uh, there was a lot of talk, uh, political talks on TV, debates and stuff and in, in France we had Chirac as president which we also called Super Liar, Super Liar. <laughs> uh, I was tired of hearing all these political debates and the people lying and never accountable for it, so I thought maybe I would record stuff that could be reviewed later. Uh, so I started recording uh, debates on TV on my computer, but uh, in AVI first, and it was no good because if your computer wasn't fast enough, <coughs> it would drop frames and audio and everything would be in desync, so you could just delete the file. I also did FMPEG uh, 1 and 2, but the quality wasn't really good. It was heavy, it was even too compressed. And my idea was to store it for later usage. So uh, I was looking for something to do that, and none of the solutions I had would work. And I'm a coder, so I thought, well, then I do it myself. Um, so I found a guy. Uh, Finnish guy called Lasse Karkainen, who created a format called uh, MCF, also known as TMF, uh, which stands for Media Container Format, very basic name, which basically had most of the stuff I was looking for. So it had, it was a blog based, uh, the whole concept of layout. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Matroska format, but. Uh, Basically, the layout was what's already in Matroska. And the, his idea was to create a format which would at least stand for 10 years. So at the time, things were changing a lot in the video world, so 10 years were like eternity for us. So the idea was to have uh, something stable enough uh, that would be future proof. Um, so I started working with him for. I don't know, maybe one year, and then he left for military service, and I continued to work with other people online on forums and mailing lists. Uh, so I changed the format into something more tree-like, like XML files. Uh, and at first it was just structures, very plain and simple, and the idea was to make it more tree-like so elements could be added uh, without changing the format and making <coughs> old files or new files not played in older players like yourself. And because XML is very verbose, it make, creates a lot of data and for video especially compressed, that's not very nice. Uh, the idea was to find a way to reduce the size so we each element has an ETF8 like uh, format which depending if the data is going to be long or short. The storage way is also short or long. And there was also a buzzword at the time called semantic web. I don't know if you've heard of it. It kind of died since then. Uh, but 
the idea was that uh, we make the format uh, semantic, separate from the format design, so uh, um, and everything could be described in a machine read readable way. Uh, so that was everything that was added uh, to the original uh, MCF. Uh, so that's basically the, the main goal that ended up from all these discussions was to have something future-proof, extensible, uh, that could be used for live recording even if you have drop frames, that means using time stamps to make sure everything's always in sync. Uh, that can be stored uh, that means, uh, well, if you get it, uh, network transmissions, that, uh, I mean live transmissions. So since we designed the thing and I was working a lot of network stuff, the idea was the format could also be used like a transport stream, like what TV are uh, doing. Uh, so there, there's a way to use Matroska or fossilized transmission. I call infinite. So there's no size, you don't know the size of the end, it could go on forever. Uh, so that's not as good for storage, but that's another way to use Metro Scan. Uh, subtitles, something that wasn't very common for storage at the time. Uh, chapters, which was found mostly in DVDs, but the idea was to replace every existing format with something that was for every use case we could identify. Uh, and we thought we had something very good. Uh, and after that, uh, because we, we uh, separated the semantic from the actual way to store the format, the, there's actually two parts to Matroska. There's something called EBML, which stands for uh, Extensible binary meta language, so it's basically XML but in the binary way. So just like XML, it's extensible, it's dot tag uh, <coughs> semantic based. There's a very low overhead because that was our main goal. There, there are other uh, XML binary formats, but they are still very valuable, like XML, but we didn't want that, and they didn't exist at the time. Uh, it can store very large sizes. For now, we limited to uh, the day. Uh, I think it's 72 terabytes. Okay, 72 terabytes per file. Okay. And then we can move the files together to create something <laughs> bigger. Uh, it, there are checksums that you can, you can put in every, almost every uh, place in the format. So <coughs> basically, every frame you could have. Uh, um, every video frame and every audio frame, if you really want that, you can do that, you can have a checksum for, I think this for storage is very interesting. And editable, because like I said, we wanted something that works for editing, so as much as we wanted live streaming, we wanted something that could be editable, so, so if you, like, uh, you will know the editors for video, moving stuff around. Uh, having, so the idea was that if you need to change something, or even tags, for example, you can always do it and keep the format uh, safe. Uh, so I'm here alone, but actually the format wasn't created just by myself. Uh, so there was Lasso, and in, in the middle you can see the nicknames either on IRC or forums where they talk. Um, not many used to use our real names. Uh, so there was Lasso who created the original file. Uh, Franklin, who was key to define some of the EBML parts. And then a lot of other people were involved in a lot of different things. As especially Moritz Bunkus, which is not here today, but who is working on NKVMAG, which is the main uh, program to create natural scaffolds. There are many others now, but he's the one who maintains the most important one and he keeps adding the features when they are needed. Uh, Mike Matznev, which is Russian, who did the first independent parser outside of the one that I created. 
we also did one thing, the direct show filter that everybody used, maybe even now, uh, on Windows. Uh, Videolan, where I created the first uh, way to, uh, to play Matros Cafe, the first um, files in VFC. And Dave Rest, which is here, which has been helping for about a year or more in making Matroska uh, more refined standards. The specs have always been there for almost the beginning. Uh, but uh, a lot of things are not written, they're all in my head, so Dave is helping me getting things written instead of keeping them in my head. Uh, there are also a lot of mailing lists. Uh, a lot of things we discussed have been discussed like 10 years ago, but now maybe it's time to put a more paper. Or maybe. Uh, the best unknown features, because um, the basic use of Matroska is to play, to record and play files, but you can also have tags, which is well, your like, archive people. So for you, tags are most, more common, but for most people, they tag their music on in iTunes and stuff like that, but never the videos. But since we are we do uh, audio and video files, we have tags for audio, but also for video. Uh, we have something called link segments. So a mattress cafe is basically a segment, what we call a segment, but you can link segments together to create something different, like in a DVD you have uh, different parts, like the menu, and you have the main movie and maybe the bonuses, and each of these parts could be one segment. They might not have the same resolution, they might be the same codec, but it's still one, uh, it can still be seen as one entity. Concatenation, so you can put files together also to create one entity that's not always using the same feature. So a DVD menu subsystem, because like I said, the idea was to replace everything that existed. That means uh, turn a DVD, even its menus and everything, even the hidden part that are something sometimes in DVDs into Matroska. So I spent a lot of time and it's still not finished after 10 years. Uh, I recently started to work on it again on it. But uh, basically, if you take a DVD and KV extractor and you use uh, VLC, um, a recent VLC, you can actually get some of the DVD menus playing from Matroska. And one of the best features is time spent in uh, floating points. Uh, it's actually a the main mistake we did when we did the design of Matroska, and uh, a lot of people complain about that, is that timestamps are actually floating points. Not really, because it's one integer, one floating team point, and one integer. So, and the floating point is most of the time one, so in most cases you can discard it and it's actually integer. But it's not. Uh, um, or denominator, so it's not exactly precise. Uh, and that can be uh, sometimes a problem for our hands, but the, the precision is one nas nanosecond. My idea was to be able to record even uh, physical experiments that can happen in very, very short times. So I, I looked around and I thought the nothing further than one nanosecond is possible even in the scientific world, so I thought it was good enough. Best as vaporware. So for a long time, before we actually started creating the, the programs to create the files and read them, we <coughs> talked a lot. So first there was MCF, then Matroska. We talked a lot on forums, so I tried to get input from people in the open world, not in the professional, professional world. But to actually see if we were missing something or if we did something wrong, like maybe someone could have pointed out the problem with timestamps. And the idea is that we would only think of the format 
before we start creating files, because once the files are out, people start making their own files. Uh, then it's over, you cannot change the format anymore. So that's why for a long time we resisted or we said, no, we're not coding until we're sure the format is good. But most of the people, when we talk to them, they I don't care about your format, I'll see if there's something wrong when it exists. So for a long time we were called the best as Apple well because we were almost harassing people, talking in forums and trying to get input and most people say, well your thing doesn't exist, so it doesn't matter. Um, so after that we got the first file, the first code done, and the first file created. So here are the main steps that made Matroska what it is today. So the first people who started using Matroska were anime fans, uh, and they were, they were putting subtitles of Japanese anime, uh, mostly either in the original Japanese subtitles or in English or French, uh, the French community. And that's, they were using Matroska because there was no other way to, be, to have one file with subtitles, DLEX, the time, and tag, whatever. There was nothing for them. So that became the first uh, popular usage. There was a uh, real video line which for a brief <coughs> moment was popular because HTTP score didn't exist yet and it was better than DLEX. So people were using that, but since real major, uh, needs uh, special software to be used, they use Matroska and some apps to make it work. Then later HTTP4 uh, appeared and uh, although there was a way to store it in MP4, uh, people still prefer to use it with Matroska because we could capture a TV show and keep the original audio. Uh, SC3 was not possible in MP4 for a long time. I don't even know if it's now possible now, probably mm -hmm. too. And uh, so uh, that's probably maybe why a lot of people uh, know Matros Canal. It's because it's used a lot for ripping TV shows from TVs and uh, sharing online on Torrent and stuff, also for movies. And that was for a long time the main usage of uh, Matros Canal. There's also movie rips for the same reason. They, they would read the um, DVDs and later Blu-rays and keep the original audio because the other formats couldn't have the original audio and also have the subtitles that they had on their disc. Also something um, that could have been done elsewhere at the time. Uh, porn, no. Uh, a lot of technologies are known for having a breakthrough when porn embraces <coughs> uh, like VHS or I don't know, now the uh, online uh, video. Uh, but we actually never got any <laughs> porn uh, embracements. Uh, but we still manage. Uh, <laughs> uh, Weather. So that was uh, Google deciding they need their own. Uh, your format that's more open and free and royalty free as well compared to H.264 or other systems. So they created WebM, which in, at the time was VK8 for audio and Vorbis, uh, VK8 for video and Vorbis for audio. And the under underlying format is Matroska <laughs> with some parts removed, but basically it's Matroska with a different name. And uh, recently, uh, now there's H.265, which is used for uh, Ultra HD. And um, now, uh, I've talked about TV shows, and now a lot of TV shows you find on illegal sites are using H.265 because the compression is better. And they're still using Microsoft, even though it's officially supported in uh, MP4. I suppose it's all for the same reason as before, they can keep the audio and subtitles. And the uh, last growth we're seeing is because of what's happening now and tomorrow in IETF is the standardization and making the specifications uh, clearer and more uh, defined. 
So uh, basically, the time of the, the life of my first class was for me. I started looking at a format in 2001. In, on the 6th of December of 2002, I left the format uh, in the MCF. My master came back from the army, and he disagreed what with what I had done and he wanted to keep his format his way and I think my way was a lot better. So I decided to leave and create my uh, my own format, which I would call Matroska. And uh, if you look on Wikipedia and the history of Matroska, you can find a link on the email I sent on a mailing me saying, okay, goodbye, I'm leaving and I'm creating my own format for the field of Matroska. Um, in 2004, at 364 appeared, and that was a huge uh, boom for us because now every video you could download on the internet would use the NKV expansion. And in 2007, there was the first hardware support, uh, mostly in small boxes you plug on your TV that has a hard drive so people would download stuff and plug your own thing on your TV and you could work their mattress files like that. 2009, the first built in, the first TV that built in support mattress card, Blu ray players as well. Now, basically, if you buy a TV or Blu ray player, it does support mattress card. They all have playback support now. 2010, uh, WebM was created by Google. We worked with them in finding you know, exactly the format we worked up. Beyond yesterday, was a, there was a hard talk in, in deciding whether they would actually still make it Matroska or WebM uh, as the doc type, defining the first. First bits, you see in the file, they would say WebM or Matroska. And they went with WebM to make sure that uh, people who support WebM don't have to support all the features of Matroska. Uh, 2014, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, did support for uh, Matroska inside Windows 10. So every Windows 10 computer, phone, and Xbox, well, the Windows 10 version is not out yet, but even the Xbox One supports Matroska playback out of the box. And last milestone, which is now is the IT of uh, so standardization uh, to make the formats and the specifications, which are being marked for the last 10 years as temporary, uh, something more stable. Uh, specification people can rely on without asking me. Uh, <coughs> where does the name come from? Uh, so because of email, uh, it's, a, it's like XML, it's a structure of data inside data inside data, so I thought the Russian door would be a good uh, idea for the name, and I thought, I asked people what's the name of the Russian doors in Russian and it's Matryoshka. But with the people in the team, they thought Matryoshka was just too hard to name. So we went for something uh, more Americanized uh, from Matroska. I call it Matroska, but sometimes you write, write it with the special S, which has as chili pronounce sh. So it's Matroshka, if you want. Um, and there's also the file extension. I was going for CAS, K, or KA for audio. Uh, but it sound, turns out um, the German people thought CAS was too close for cheese in German. Uh, but still, if you look at the Lead Matroska, the main library I wrote to read the Matroska file, the, each class uh, starts with CAX. So so it's because uh, it was original, original plan to be called something. And now we use MKV, which is also a cool name. It's like Mark 4 or 5 uh, uh, for marking versions of stuff. 
the logo, uh, the official logo is now the last one. The first one was created by a Japanese girl, and that's the very first thing we used. It had uh, uh, like a bear uh, of, uh, with the shape of a Russian doll. Uh, later, for a long time, we used the second one. We still used the Russian doll, the more style, the more style, <coughs> and added more color and making more uh, square shapes for logos and stuff like that. And later, we designed it to keep it even more uh, simple. Uh, so, it's also a personal adventure. Uh, for me, I started with more to record stuff and ended up creating the formats uh, used uh, by a lot of people. Uh, I made a lot of people, I learned a lot. I didn't know anything about video before starting it. It was a bit foolish, I guess, you know, uh, naive. Um, but now it's in the most popular operating systems, everybody can use it. Easily, it's in Windows and Droids, it's used globally. Uh, as I said, it's every TV store and every Blu ray player, every Xbox. I think it might even be in PlayStation, I'm not sure. So basically, it's everywhere now. And I even got a few jobs because of I created my first car, work for Zivex, I work for Coconut, which was working for my own mattress car for a while. And now I work for Video Labs, which is a uh, pay to work on VLC. So uh, my day job is working on VLC, and not even especially on my first time. And that's it. mentioned um, that you can actually map DVD chapters in animation. Yes. So for example, if I want to preserve a DVD, do tools exist that are just like pop in an ISO and out comes a bunch of MKV or? Yes, I made that tool, but it's not finished. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't work for it for 10 years. Uh, I, I first, I did it as a proof of concept. Basically, that's what it is for now. Uh, I just took a few DVDs and, and saw, okay, I take these, I turn them into uh, just NKV, and it should play exactly like the DVD, the original DVD plays. I did that in VLC. Uh, so I did the two to transform the stuff. You don't have to actually know how it works. It just creates the files, the commands to run NKV merge to create the Metroska from the original source. If you want, you can change the codec, like if you have V1, whatever, or if you don't like some parts. But if you want to keep the original MPEG-1, MPEG-2, and audio, SCC, DTS, whatever, you can have them. 
to turn them into files, then you have your micro scaffold, you click, VLC opens, and it should play the DVD. So it's a proof of concept. There's not all the DVD commands, not how it works in the DVD I supported, but for the DVDs I selected, it works. So it would be possible to expand it, refine it, and make it work for every DVD as long as they follow the original What is the name of it? The program ID, ID is called NKV Extractor. Okay, yeah, the DVD and the DVD extractor or something <coughs> like that. Yeah. BMX. BMX, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for short term. Make some tests with this problem. Mm -hmm. I have uh, quite to understand the yeah. logical and uh, I saw a lot of uh, issues with time frames. Yeah, but, um, I started working on it, on that again to make it work again in VLC because mm -hmm. that's quite from 10 years ago. VLC has changed a lot, so, uh, mm -hmm. so I had to go back to the also to the pro, to the program ID to understand how it was done because I don't remember either. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have fixed some stuff, so there are some updates in the mm -hmm. program. And yeah, it's still far from something fully usable. It's, like I said, it's mostly a proof of concept. So it's, a, it's a whole concept. Uh, yeah, a big huge yeah, yeah, it would, uh, should be a project on its own to be able to make, define exactly what's called the Metro uh, Chapter Project, <coughs> to match it exactly what's in the system. And you will work on that? If I have time, yes, or if there's demand, I mean, yeah. The, um, the other slide to the beginning of the year is the uh, Costco script. When you, when mm -hmm. script actions. We, we have only one, one action at the time. Yeah. And uh, is there a way we can define more? Uh, normally, you, you can use actions <coughs> in the chapter. or aspects about it that uh, over the, the time that you wish you would have done differently or added or... or uh, the timestamps we discuss the tags which nobody uses even though uh, we've had like three different versions of tags until we have something we're happy with and um, still people don't use it so maybe it's still not good for the design, um, not really. I think it, I think for all the use cases, I could think of even now. I think it can cover anything. Like I said, even DVDs, which are tricky, but, um, it's possible. Uh, there's something missing, and that's important for people here. Is uh, something to store time codes in a standard way. Uh, we're working on that for the IETF. Uh, that's something that's missing, if not for end users, but in the professional world, I think it's something that could be useful. Um, but if you have ideas, you're welcome. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.